So, Kurman, please admit the new participants. Yes, sir, I'm doing that. Okay, so let us get it going. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Satyanarena. I'm from Tata Institute of Fundamental Research. Um, welcome to today's colloquium uh, being organized by Indian Physics Association. Uh, before I go and even say a few more words, I would also like to extend uh, greetings on the occasion of Engineers Day today. Uh, we'll say a few words later uh, about the significance of today. Uh, but coming back to the colloquium, this is going to be hosted uh, by uh, WIE, uh, IEEE WIE uh, wing of uh, Sri Sant Gajanan Maharaj College of Engineering, Shagam. Uh, it's very nice to take this um, colloquia series uh, away from Mumbai and also to other cities and towns. Today, we have a very distinguished speaker, Dr. Kanuja Dikshit, the senior scientist from the Medical Electronics Division of Samir. And she's going to talk on particle accelerator technology for radiotherapy and hadron therapy. I, uh, I'm sure you know how important uh, this particular topic is. Uh, but uh, we'll have more on the speaker and other details coming from our host, uh, Dr. Kormit Tanvi. Uh, but let me um, also say a few words uh, about the engineers day and also about the ipa of course i don't have to kind of tell to this audience what is the significance of today it is birthday of uh, sir moksha gundam Shesraya, one of the most uh, you know well loved and most dis distinguished uh, engineer this country had ever uh, produced uh, he lived long he lived more than 100 years uh, during the entire period uh, it is said that, you know, he spent every minute of his life for the welfare of the country. And uh, many of you must be knowing all uh, fantastic projects that he had, uh, works that he had, uh, you know, constructed or done at uh, various parts of the country uh, as a civil engineer. But however, uh, maybe what some of you may not know that he also has his knowledge and interest and vision and for many other topics far away from engineering. Uh, for example, he is the person who uh, <clears throat> sorry, founded the State Bank of Mysore. Uh, he had a great knowledge on economic banking. He is also a person who wrote the first uh, you can say document on the five-year planning, you know, which India, uh, we all go by the so-called five-year plans. The entire progress of this country is delimited as uh, by, you know, the plans, five-year plans, and he was the, in some sense, uh, the originator of uh, such a concept, and so on and so forth. He is a multi, obviously, multi-faceted personality, and, uh, you know, he had done uh, fantastic, uh, I mean, I would say his, his contributions were not just limited to as an engineer or the civil engineer, but uh, to the entire welfare of the, of the country and society. So it's great, uh, this day we have... Uh, uh, this very important and nice lecture coming up. Um, once again, to also say a few words on uh, the Indian Physics Association, uh, which is actually hosting this uh, talk today. Uh, it was founded, I mean, as the name says, it is an association of physicists uh, in the country. It was founded uh, in 1970, so more than 50 years old. Uh, in fact, recently, it conducted during COVID uh, the I IPF 50 webinar series, which have been a great success. Uh, uh, IPA uh, is headed by Professor um, S. Ramakrishnan. We call him Ramki. He was former director of TIFR. And uh, Professor Vandana Nanal is a very well known nuclear physicist. He is the uh, uh, general secretary. Uh, mainly IPA license with uh, license with other physics uh, societies, not only in India, but uh, other countries as well, and organizes a large number of seminars and conferences and so on and so forth. Um, it also, uh, of course, it has large number of chapters. Chapters are regional centers, um, you know, in many universities and, uh, you know, colleges and so on. Uh, every part of the country, there are IPA chapters. Uh, as I said, it organizes a very, very uh, important conferences, seminars, and so on. 
And also one of the other major activity of uh, IPA is to bring out quarterly um, magazine, uh, which is called IPA News, uh, which uh, you must it is, you must see, you must read. These uh, soft copies will be available on the web page. Uh, it brings very, very high quality scientific articles and other informations and, uh, you know, things like that. I think it's a, it's a very, very high value um, magazine. IP also award, uh, gives awards, large number of awards to young and, uh, you know, old uh, people, uh, you know, outstanding uh, lifetime achievements and uh, various uh, for their discoveries, for their prominent work that was done. The large varieties of awards you should also see on the web page to see what are all the awards that IPA constitutes. Last but not least, IPA also uh, uh, hosts uh, the Gender in Physics Working Group, which is very, very well known. Uh, again, on its own, organizes many events which are of interest to uh, the women community, but also I mean, in general to all of us. And uh, incidentally, it is also uh, now hosting, going to host rather next year, uh, 2023, uh, this is International Conference on Women in Physics. It will be held in July uh, 2023 virtually. So that's a great opportunity for all of you to also participate in it. So uh, I shouldn't take more time, but uh, with these few words on IPA and uh, the significance of today. And now let me pass on the baton to uh, Dr. Pomal Tanvi, who will take the rest of the proceedings and before the speaker comes on to speak. Over to Pomal. Uh, thank you, sir. So I hope I'm clearly audible. So, yes. uh, so this was uh, uh, Dr. B. Satyanarayana. He is a chair of IEEE Bombay section and as well as a scientific officer TIFR Mumbai. And I was, uh, we were really grateful, sir, to have you uh, here with us. And uh, thank you for your opening remarks. Thank now, you. Uh, Thank you, sir. This is uh, Mrs. Komal Vyas uh, from uh, EXTC department. Uh, I'm a faculty in EXTC department, SSGMC Shega, as well as I am working uh, as a faculty advisor of uh, WISBAG SSGMC Shega. So I welcome you all to this colloquium on particle accelerator technology for uh, radiotherapy and hadron therapy. And we are glad to have speaker for today's session, uh, uh, that is Dr. Tanuja Dikshit from Samir. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, so this, uh, this colloquium is being organized by IPA, that is Indian Physics Association, as sir, sir already mentioned. And it is a part of online uh, monthly colloquium series uh, on recent development on scientific research activities in uh, physics and their applications. So before we uh, start with the event, I would like to take an opportunity to thank uh, Professor Vandana Ma'am and IPA for providing our college uh, with the opportunity to host this colloquium. Uh, now, uh, moving forward, I'll just take uh, some time to uh, introduce my college. So um, to give you a brief introduction, our college, uh, Sri Santa Gajanan Maharaj College of Engineering, Shegao, uh, uh, was established in 1983 under the stewardship of Honorable Shiv Shankar Bhav Patil. Uh, the institute is recognized by AICT, approved by DT, and accredited by NAC New Delhi and also by NAC Bangalore. Uh, our institute has five un undergraduate and five postgraduate courses. Um, all our laboratories are uh, have been recognized as a center of PhD programs. Uh, we have also our own uh, dedicated research center, which has a state-of-art setup with uh, VLSI and embedded system center, SAP CRP, uh, ERP center, data center, EI, EPR lab, IP cell, uh, multimedia unit, and entrepreneurship development cell. Uh, so this was just a brief introduction um, and uh, for more details, of course, you can visit the college website and uh, talking about the IEEE uh, WISBAG. So IEEE was started in our college in 2001, long back, and WI was started uh, in 2007. And uh, uh, since then, uh, till now, around 1,000 members have been a part of this uh, committee and uh, we keep taking various programs, uh, social as well as technical, for the benefit of students as well as society. So uh, this was a short introduction of our college. Now, uh, 
uh, I will feel proud to introduce our today's uh, speaker, Dr. Tanuja Dixit. And Dr. Tanuja has done her MS, uh, has done MSc Physics from Mumbai University in 1997, and uh, she joined Samir in the same year. Uh, she played crucial role in establishing the 6 MeV and 15 MeV Linac technology for cancer therapy, uh, as well as industrial lines. She has successfully integrated more than 30 Linac structures. She took up advanced studies uh, leading to uh, PhD at Higher Energy Accelerator Research Organization, that is KEIKI Japan, in 2005 and was awarded PhD in 2008. Uh, presently, she is PI of 30 MeV electron lineage development project for generation of medical radio isotopes. Recently, uh, she, along with KEIK uh, collaborators, proposed a novel design of multi-ion hadron therapy accelerators based on fast uh, cycling induction synchrotron. She is also a member of working group set up by the Office of PSA for Mega Science Region 2035 exercise for India in the area of accelerator-based science and technology. She has published over 45 papers in journals as well as conference proceedings. So with this, uh, I would like to invite Dr. Tanuja to introduce the audience with particle accelerator technology for radiotherapy and hadron therapy. Please, ma'am. Thank you, Komen, and thank you, uh, Dr. Satya. And I would also like to thank Professor Vadana Nanan, who has showed uh, great uh, uh, confidence in me and uh, offering this opportunity to give a talk. Uh, in uh, Indian Physics Association uh, for Indian Physics Association of uh, Tokyo, uh, which is uh, nicely hosted by you at SSGMC uh, Shegaon. So it's nice to hear about your college and the facilities it is offering. And uh, I'm really thankful uh, for this opportunity. So as you said, well, that I'll be talking about particle accelerators technology for radiotherapy and hadron therapy. So I just would like to say a few words that uh, my organization, the acronym is SAMIR, which stands for Society for Applied Microwave Electronics Engineering and Research. Uh, this organization is an offshoot of TIFR and we have a shared legacy with TIFR. And now we are located at IIT Bombay campus. And uh, I hope that uh, the work which we have taken off from uh, TIFR has progressed well in the past 30 years and we have made many structures and we have made many systems which are now installed and commissioned at various uh, institutes and places and they are uh, actually uh, being very useful to the, to the society. So with this, uh, I would like to go to the next slide. So congratulations to all the engineers Today is Engineers Day, and I would like to convey my best wishes for uh, uh, this day. And uh, uh, as this quote says, that the science is about knowing and engineering is about doing. So I think this quote is best suited to us, people like us who are doing particle accelerators. Because as you know, basic science, we all know, physics, we all know, we know about the uh, various particles and other things, but it is the engineering and the technology which makes it possible. We dream about and we see uh, relativity and we know relativity, but when we see the particles accelerate in an accelerator and reach the energies which is desired, then it is where we know that, okay, so this job is done. So this is very apt and very, uh, like, I think very auspicious day for us. And also for uh, people who are in technology and engineering should appreciate uh, the um, uh, contributions made by uh, Mr. Rishvesh Valeria. And uh, this is how I would like to now continue with my talk. So uh, these are the contents of my talk and uh, I would like to be as brief as possible and also would like uh, that people should understand and uh, ask a few questions if they understand well. So though it looks like a lot of content, but I will be brief and try to be very precise in uh, explaining. 
So first of all, about my organization, Samir. So we have five centers across India, Mumbai, uh, Chennai, Vishakhapatnam, Kolkata, and Guwahati. And all in all these centers, we have various activities which are related directly or slightly indirectly towards the microwaves. So in medical electronics division, we develop Linux for cancer therapy and other strategic applications. And also in the atmospheric instrumentation in, uh, is one of the areas where Samir is working. And it is this particular uh, division is located in Mumbai center. Uh, this is a very recent activity, which is MRI, Development of Indigenous MRI uh, Machine. So this is taken up at uh, Mumbai Center. And there are various radar-related, photonics-related, and antennas-related work, which is now going on at various centers. And we are offering EMI, EMC uh, services at uh, various other centers in Chennai and in Kolkata also. So this is a short introduction about Samir. Uh, so uh, since uh, uh, I, I have to focus my talk on the medical part of our uh, uh, particle accelerators, so I will uh, just introduce uh, Samir's radiotherapy system. So this system uh, is used to treat cancers in patients and I will give a detailed introduction or detail, uh, uh, details of the system in the later slide. So this is one of our flagship projects, which is the 67V oncology system, which you see over here. This is the picture where our machine installed is, uh, is installed in a hospital and it is treating patients. And the other uh, uh, medical activity uh, or the medical uh, system which we have developed is the microwave disinfection system. This technology is now transferred to industry and uh, this system can uh, give an RF output of three kilowatt with a frequency of 2450 megahertz and it has got electrical consumption of five kilowatt per hour. So this is mostly used for uh, disinfection of hazardous hospital waste and using this, all the pathogens get destroyed and the end products remain non-infectious. So such type of units are now uh, um, being uh, de developed and delivered to various uh, government hospitals in Sikkim and many, many, in many, many places in India. And the other uh, activity is the development of linear accelerator system for radioisotope generation. So this is the current activity which we are pursuing at Samir. In this, uh, we would like to achieve an electron beam energy up to 30 MeV, which is very high. And uh, using this 30 MeV beam and a beam power of five to 10 kilowatt, we will be generating radioisotopes. So these radioisotopes are used for nuclear imaging purpose. And our main target would be to generate technetium-99. So this technetium-99 is used in mostly 80% of the nuclear imaging uh, 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 jobs which are regularly done in hospitals. So here, what we are uh, trying to do is connect two Linux in series and then uh, accelerate the beam to 30 MeV and that 30 MeV electron beam will fall on a target, produce photons, and those photons will be used to convert moly 100 to moly 99, which is a radioisotope, and uh, which then uh, uh, decays to TC99. So this is a project which is currently ongoing at Samir. Other uh, very important uh, activity is uh, MRA. So we are trying to develop an indigenous uh, uh, magnetic uh, resonance imaging system at Samir. So as you can see, most of the MRI machines which are in India are imported from GE or any other company. So this is a very important component in, from the imaging point of view. And if we can come out with an Indian solution, then we see that it has got a lot of potential and a lot of users are there in the, in, in the country and uh, many hospitals will be benefited if this uh, technology is uh, developed here in Samir 
and uh, of course this since this is going to be indigenous technology it is going to be cheaper compared to the other uh, imported machines so this is also a very important activity which is just now going on at samir so uh, basically in uh, my talk uh, i will talk about uh, various particle accelerators which are used for uh, uh, radiotherapy and hadron therapy so in this slide what i would like to explain is that uh, particle acceleration uh, basically uh, takes place by electromagnetics or by electrostatics so in this electromagnetic way, if we go, then there are two uh, parts like resonant and non-resonant. If we talk about resonant uh, uh, way of acceleration, then we have linear accelerators and circular accelerators. So in, uh, in today's talk, I will talk about Linux. I will talk about cyclotrons and trons, and I will also talk about induction thrustron. So these three, are, uh, these three are the main accelerators which are normally used for medical applications worldwide. This is the linear accelerator, which is which has been developed at Samir. So as you can see from uh, uh, this uh, figure, so uh, this is the source of electrons, which is a thermionic electron gun. It is a diode gun, which produces electrons. And then electrons are accelerated in this copper structure. So the structure you can see over here are nothing but the uh, uh, RF resonant cells and these cells operate at certain frequency and which is the source of the RF power, uh, which is the frequency of the RF power, which uh, is used to uh, establish the electric fields in the cavities. So electrons when are injected in this structure are accelerated cell by cell and after uh, reaching the final energy at the end of the structure, they fall on the target and then produces X-rays. So there are many components which makes a linear accelerator tube. So all those things I will be explaining in the later slides. So the other accelerator is a cyclotron. So many of you must have uh, read about cyclotrons in your basic uh, physics course when you were in the 11th or 12th standard or maybe in uh, your engineering first year also where some a slight idea must be given to you about how the acceleration of particles takes place. So about the cyclotrons, uh, the source of particles is in the center and there are two magnets which are called as Ds and a source of uh, uh, energy which is alternating current source is given to these uh, 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 chambers which are also called as electrodes. So when these uh, particles are injected in the center of this uh, cyclotron, they are accelerated using the electric field, which is uh, given across this uh, gap of the electrodes. And as the energy increases, the radius of the particles which are circulating inside increases. And then at the end, when the final energy is reached, it is extracted from the uh, cyclotron. So as you can see here, this. Uh, angular frequency uh, is dependent on B, but it is independent of velocity. So here in this case, as you can see, in the case of a cyclotron, the magnetic field is constant. And as the particle gains energy, the radius keeps on increasing. So this is the picture of the first cyclotron, which was made very early by E.O. Lawrence. And you, as you can see the size of this uh, cyclotron, it is only the size of a palm of the man who is holding this. So you can see, we can make a very small accelerator even using a very basic components, uh, which is uh, possible. So here in the case of a cyclotron, the final beam energy is determined by the radius and the magnetic field at the point of extraction. So earlier I explained what is linear accelerator, then about the cyclotrons. And the next is the uh, cyclotrons which are available in India. So uh, we have a normal conducting cyclotron and superconducting cyclotron uh, at VECC. This one is uh, K130, which is uh, it can go up to 130 MeV energy. And this is operational since June 1977. And uh, there are many commercially available cyclotrons in India, which are used for generation of radioisotopes for imaging purpose. So one of the most common isotope which is generated commercially by uh, these cyclotrons is FDG. 
So uh, these type of cyclotrons you can see at many regional uh, medical centers in Parel, Mumbai, and at many places in India. And uh, uh, the commercial uh, cyclotrons are made by IBA company, and they are used for uh, therapy, which is uh, proton therapy. So in India, we now have one um, uh, uh, already commissioned uh, therapy machine at Apollo Hospital Chennai, and one is coming at Etrek Hargar, which is under commissioning. It is not yet treating patients. So at VECC, you will find one normal conducting cyclotron and one superconducting cyclotron. And these cyclotrons are used for research purpose as well as for the generation of radioisotopes. The so next comes the synchrotron. As you have seen earlier, in the case of a cyclotron, the magnetic field is kept constant and the uh, radius of the particle as it gains energy keeps on increasing. But in the case of a synchrotron, the magnetic field is ramped or it keeps on increasing, but the path of the beam or the particle is kept constant, which means that the radius is constant, but the magnetic field keeps on changing. So here you will see by this formula that as the acceleration takes place with the changing magnetic field, the path remains same, but the magnetic field uh, uh, value keeps on increasing. So in the case of a synchron, there are uh, many components like the source which generates the particles. It can be ECR ion source or any type of ion source which can inject particles in this accelerator. And it after the source comes the pre-injector, which means from a very low energy from, uh, of the particles, uh, some uh, initial or pre-acceleration is given uh, to the ions after the source so that uh, it can be injected in the other accelerator, which is called as an injector. So here in this uh, uh, figure, as you can see, this is the source of the particle and the particles are injected at 750 keV and then it goes in the accelerator, which is a linear accelerator or a LINAC and the energy is further enhanced from 750 keV to 40 MeV. So this is where uh, this, this LINAC or this uh, section is called as a pre-injector. Then it goes in the booster ring where the energy is further increased and then it goes in the main ring. So stepwise acceleration takes place in this type of a cascade accelerator like a synchron. So this is a picture of a, a proton synchron at KEK in Japan. So uh, uh, you all must be knowing about CERN. So CERN has a very uh, largest accelerator in the world, which is uh, 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 their LHC, Large Hadron Collider, and it's the world's largest synchron. And it has a circumference of about 27 kilometers. And the final energy achieved in this accelerator is 7 TeV, which is trillion electron volts. So this is the world's largest accelerator used for study of basic physics and many other uh, uh, technologies and many other applications have come out from this, uh, from the development of this accelerator. And they have a very uh, a good project going on or for the development of a compact hadron therapy. So all these are the offshoots of the uh, accelerator, which is developed at uh, CERN. And uh, the accelerator type at CERN is a synchron, which I have explained in the earlier slide. We have a synchron at RRCAT. It is an electron synchron, and it is called as INDUS. And there, the injector or the source of a particle is a microtron, which produces the electrons, which goes to the booster ring. From, so from 20 MeV, the energy is increased to 550 MeV. And from 550 MeV, the energy is increased to 2.5 GeV in the Indus uh, main ring. So these are the three types of accelerators, linear accelerators, cyclotrons and synchrotrons, which are used for acceleration of particles. And we have uh, these variety of uh, accelerators in our country, which I have explained in these slides. 
So now I will talk about why these accelerators are used for cancer therapy and what is the motivation behind it. So as you can see from this uh, diagram, so this uh, graph shows the dose, which is nothing but the energy, which is used to uh, measure the uh, absorbed energy in a tissue. And uh, as you can see from here, the 100 ergs of energy absorbed by one gram of a given body tissue is read as one rad. So one rad uh, uh, energy or it's the uh, uh, unit of a radiation which is given for the treatment while treating cancer or cancers. So this is the dose pro diffusion profile of electrons, photons and protons and also the carbon ions. So the, here, this is the electrons. So when we would, when we want to treat patients using electrons, then the most of the energy of the electrons is deposited near the surface. While if we are using photons, as you can see from here, the lot of dose is deposited at a particular depth. But later we see a lot of exit dose is also given to the healthy tissue. Suppose this is the location of the tumor then if we would like to treat this tumor using electrons, photons or protons or carbon ions, then you can see that this is how the dose is given at that particular location. So if we are uh, using electrons, then not, on very little dose is delivered at the desired location. If we are using photons, then dose is given to the tumor cells, but a lot of dose is given to the healthy cells also. But if we are using protons and carbon ions, then the dose delivered is very precise and very localized. So this is the motivation for using accelerators for the treatment of cancer. So here you can see that in the case of X-rays, uh, the effect which is taking place inside the tissue or the cell is indirect because what happens when the X-rays fall on these uh, DNA strands, then it ionizes and then this ionization of the cells causes the damage to the uh, cancerous cells. Whereas in the case of heavy ions like protons or carbon ions, when it is directed to the uh, cancerous tissue, then it breaks the DNA strand and it really kills the cells. So this is the how the uh, uh, treatment of uh, cancer using X-rays and heavy ions takes place. So this is our Samir 6 MEV oncology machine. The nickname is Siddhartha and the energy which is given by this machine is uh, 6 MeV electrons. And when these electrons fall on a target, it gives photon or almost 6 MeV, but it is a continuous spectrum. But mostly the 6 MeV photons are used to treat the cancers which are deposited at a certain location in the body. So this is the picture uh, of the Adair Neck Institute at uh, Indore. Uh, our two more machines are now installed at uh, Amravati and also at uh, Cancer Institute Adyar. So the most important parameter from the uh, treatment point of view is the flatness and the symmetry of the dose. So these two parameters define that it is useful for uh, treatment of the cancer. So this is the machine which we have developed at Samir. So a lot of engineering and physics goes in developing such machines and it's a very, very involved system and it takes a lot of time to develop this system. So oh, I would like to just uh, uh, appeal to the students that uh, whatever engineering or physics you are learning in your uh, college degrees is uh, all useful in uh, developing an accelerator uh, if you are going to uh, we uh, go in the field of, uh, of particle accelerators. So this is a complete uh, block diagram of the Linux system. What I would like to emphasize here, it is not only the Linux or which is the physics or the technology behind, there are so many other multidisciplinary things required to develop a Linux system. Like here, you can see the vacuum or knowledge of vacuum is important because if the vacuum is not good, then the electrons get scattered and do not, do not reach the uh, at the end of the line where the target is uh, 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 present. Uh, of course, uh, since a lot of high power like microwave power source is required, which delivers six megawatt or 
2.6 kilo megawatt of power. So water cooling becomes or thermal issues becomes very important. We should have a control unit to control these machines and also a lot of microwaves, electrical, electronics, engineering, physics, and all those things, everything is uh, required to make a accelerator based system, which is used for therapy or any, 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 any other accelerators, which is used in the world. So this is heart of the uh, therapy system, which is a uh, LINAC. So the one which we have developed is a S-band side couple structure. And it is also a standing wave structure, which means that the, in the uh, electromagnetic uh, power is given to this structure, then it gets reflected from both the ends of the structure and forms a standing wave. And this uh, uh, structure is operated at pi by two frequency. Since this structure is made up of cavities, which is nothing but uh, uh, um, sort of a many, many coupled cavities uh, working together. So we operate at a pi by two frequency, which is the operating mode of this LANIC tube. So these are the main uh, subsystems of this LANIC, electron source or gun, which produces electrons. Accelerator is this copper structure, which is nothing but a cylindrical waveguide target to produce x-rays rf window is to separate uh, the uh, vacuum part from the pressurized sf6 part where the megawatt power flows through the waveguides and also the sputter ion pump to take care of the residual outgassing uh, during the operation so uh, to begin with uh, we start with the electron one which is the source of uh, uh, electrons so the process uh, taking place here is the thermionic emission. And uh, the, when the cathode is heated and uh, it produces electrons due to thermionic emission, and we have to focus those electrons to form a beam. And uh, this uh, beam uh, is injected in the accelerator at a KEV level. So this is the picture of a electron gun, which we have developed at Samir. It's a Pierce type diode gun. And the cathode use is a dispenser type cathode, which can draw current up to two amperes per centimeter square. And this gun can deliver a pulse current of 710 milliampere, which is sufficient for uh, to deliver the dose to the patients. So uh, not only the technology and uh, mechanical assembly, uh, the physics design and how the uh, electron uh, focusing takes place and how we are uh, trying to uh, come, up, come up with a structure which is focusing the electron beam is also studied uh, using many simulation softwares like this simulation is done by Egan software, which is a 2D simulation uh, tool. And uh, this type of uh, simulation is done also using 3D simulation tool, CST, which is a computer simulation uh, studio for uh, a CST studio suit for a theory simulation. So these are the some parameters which I have written, which you need not to very uh, much uh, dwell into at this time. But as you can see, we have to get a focused electron beam to get accelerated in the structure which follows later after the electron gun. So uh, this is the uh, cells or these are the units of the accelerating structure. So this is the profile of the cavity we call it as cavity, uh, RF cavity at uh, various stages. And uh, the RF power, which is fed to uh, this accelerator is uh, used to create the fields in the cavities. And then these fields are used to accelerate electron bunches. And in the structure, as you can see here, where the electron gun is placed, the buncher cavities are uh, uh, located which are used to form the bunches of the electron beam. And then later the cells are of equal length and these are called as the main cavities and it provides uniform acceleration to the electrons. So basically uh, this structure is uh, evolved after a lot of simulations and uh, uh, using 2D tools and also 3D tools like CST. So you see that for this structure, this is a single cavity electron electric field profile. And uh, this is uh, the result of simulations and this is the actually measured field profile. And this is the field profile of the entire accelerating structure. 
So here you see this is the buncher cavity where only one uh, peak is seen over here. So the electrons are injected from this side and they see a puncture cavity or a peak or electric fields and they get accelerated and then stepwise acceleration takes place and then the final energy is reached. As you can see from uh, this slide, uh, so a lot of simulations, RF simulations, so electrical uh, related uh, um, inputs are required to design this cavity and to make this structure. So in this also, you can see this is one structure which is being raised or shown over here in this figure. So this is the RF slot. So this is the slot which couples this rectangular waveguide to the cylindrical waveguide and make the electric fields uh, appear in the cavities which is required for acceleration. So this is the picture of the target. So from electron gun, which is the source of electrons, which, ex, uh, which uh, 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 injects the electron to the accelerator uh, in the cavities, the electrons get the energy which is required to uh, treat the patients. And after reaching the energy, like 6 MeV in the case of uh, treatment, uh, the 6 MeV electrons falls on the target and produces Bremsstrahlung X-rays. So this Bremsstrahlung is a physics term and it is used mainly uh, by the uh, people who are doing this uh, multi-particle tracking and all. So uh, the, when the electrons fall on a high Z material, it produces photons by a process called as Bremsstrahlung. So there are two important aspects when we are designing a target. One is the thermal and one is the radiation. So a lot of uh, high energy radiation is produced which needs to be collimated so that it goes and falls on the patient when we are treating it for the cancer. So basically, uh, this uh, the uh, thickness and various other parameters of a target is designed using various codes like MCNP codes or Monte Carlo and particle code or GIAN4 code or EGSS electron gamma shower code is used to design this target. So this is the graph of the uh, photon output from coming out from a, a target. In this case, this is the plot for a 6 MeV uh, electron beam energy. So when 6 MeV electron falls on a high Z material like tungsten, then this is how the uh, photon angular distribution plot looks like. So most of the photons are going in the forward direction, which are used for the therapy. So here you can see that those uh, angular distribution is uh, compared with the experimental data and we see a good uh, agreement between the simulations and the experimental uh, data which we have obtained. So uh, important uh, part of an accelerator is uh, RF window. So RF window is uh, used to maintain vacuum inside the accelerator and also to isolate the high pressure SF6 outside. Because to... Uh, uh, Tanja, if I can interrupt. Uh, yeah. That came to Zoom at this point. It says, is there a role of protons in the entire process? Uh, that is the question. I thought it is contextual. So I thought I would I should just point out. There's one... Shiva asked this question. Yeah, tell me. But the question says, is there any role of protons in the entire process? So I... No, I don't think so because what I have explained till now in these slides is only about the electrons. Electrons, yeah. Yeah. So uh, for protons, you need a lot of energy. Though because of uh, some uh, like uh, the vacuum which we achieve in the accelerators is of, of the order of minus eight or, or so, some slight scattering of electrons takes place, but not a ripple of protons. Sure, we can move on. Yeah. So uh, this RF window uh, separates the vacuum side from the RF uh, SF6 outside in the waveguides. So basically the role of this uh, RF window is that it should be transparent to the microwaves which are going inside and it should not reflect or absorb any uh, uh, power which is going inside the accelerator. So uh, not only 6 MeV structure, we have made a 15 MeV structure also which is used for therapy. So earlier 6 MeV structure was given 
only photons for the treatment, but the, this uh, dual energy structure can give photons and electrons both with various energies for the treatment part. So not only the smaller structure, 6 MeV oncology system we have developed, we have developed a 15 MeV system also. So uh, uh, these slides explain how, how the energy variation and all takes place. Maybe I'll just skip for time being. And uh, what I want to insist over here that uh, using our machine, so many exposures, exposures means radiation doses are given to the patients and they have been treated at these uh, hospitals which are located at uh, Chandigarh, Kolkata, Varda, Chennai, at various places in India. So now uh, I would like to talk about the various technologies in uh, slightly in detail because earlier I have explained how an accelerator works, what are the main components of accelerators like electron gun, accelerating structure, target, window, and all those things. But now what is the technology which is required to develop this accelerator structure? So this slide I have shown earlier also, these are the various block diagrams required to run an accelerator system like a LINAC for therapy. So in this case, uh, first aspect is the mechanical engineer. It is a very important and very basic and very crucial aspect of uh, making a LINAC tube. So you see both ultra precision, like, like here you see, this is almost a diamond turn cavity and the finish we get is of the order of nanometers. So you see it is reflecting, it is almost like a mirror. When you hold this cavity in front of you, you can see yourself in the mirror because the surface finish is so good. So this type of uh, precision, ultra, ultra high precision and also ultra high finish is required to achieve the Q factors and the frequency from the cavities. So not only this, uh, when you see the gantry structure, it is a very huge tons uh, of weight of structure. So not only ultra precision, also heavy engineering is required. And so therefore we have to set up a modern CNC lathe, milling and jig boring and other machines to get the parts which is required to make a LANIC. So not only mechanical engineering, it is microwave engineering, vacuum tube technologies to attain high vacuum, also ceramic to metal seals technology to get the isolations required to operate a gun is required. And there is a lot of high voltages because uh, the power which we are uh, handling here is megawatts. So high voltage engineering and control uh, electronics and dosimetry and physics is also a very integral part or a very integral technology required to make this planet tube. So about the ultra high vacuum uh, uh, requirement. So since uh, 10 to power minus eight tor is required, which is very, very uh, high vacuum. So we have to have joints which are leak tight. So if I need a vacuum of minus eight, then I have to get joints which are one order less, which is minus nine, minus 10 order leak tight, so that I get a vacuum which is minus eight order in a line tube. Mm -hmm. So this is not a simple process. It requires a lot of processing like vacuum raising, hydrogen raising, spot welding, also acid cleaning so that not much outgassing takes place later when the machine is functional. So uh, apart from high, high ultra high vacuum technology, ceramic to metal seal technology is required to uh, uh, get the uh, voltages out of the uh, seals which we are using in the style system. And apart from that ultra high or very high power microwave technology is also required. So since the electrons are accelerated to few millions uh, volts, the voltage and power involved is very high. The RF sources gives power of the order of few megawatts from magnetrons and klystrons. So magnetrons or klystrons are the source of microwave power for this accelerator structure. Since these machines are very compact, it is necessary to achieve energy of a few MeV in a very short length in the accelerating structures. And our uh, frequency in which we operate is around three gigahertz. So uh, to get six MeV uh, photons, uh, we need at least a feet of accelerating structure. So this means that around 30 megavolt per meter gradient we achieve in our accelerating structures. 
So this is a picture of our classroom, which is uh, use uh, which we use in our 15 MeV systems, and the uh, power requirement is six megawatt to achieve 15 MeV energy in the accelerating structure. And also, you see a lot of power is going inside these components. So this power is getting is getting dissipated on various components. So we have to take out the heat. So a lot of chillers and other uh, systems are required to take the heat out of the uh, various components. Uh, then comes the radiation part because the radiation is uh, used to treat the cancerous cells. So uh, to measure the radiation output very precisely is very important because we are treating patients and humans are involved. So dose uh, uh, deposition profile, what is the depth of those dose, what is the stability required and what is the energy stability we are getting from the lionic electron beam is all these parameters become so important because the patients are uh, treated using these machines and the doses, if you give to a normal healthy tissue, then the cells die because of that. So it's very important that the radiation is handled very, very uh, uh, safely in these machines. So these are the various uh, plots which I am showing over here. So this is the depth dose plot for our 6ME machine and these are the uh, flatness and symmetry plots you can see. So these are the important parameters from the medical physics point of view. And these measurements are done using radiation radi RFA, which is also called as residual field analyzer. So over the period of time, various advances has taken place in radiotherapy. So I will not go in those details because I may not have much time. I would just like to uh, state a few statistics, which says that uh, we will have uh, approximately uh, uh, these many number of cases at these sites. Like in India, tobacco-related cancer cases are the most. And uh, also, uh, you have seen that the government is also trying to see to it that um, uh, they are putting a lot of restrictions on the tobacco and its uses and it's uh, um, by the uh, regular public. So this is one uh, place where the number of cases are more. And also the cases which we will see, and this is slightly older data uh, by 2020, there will be more than 1.6 million cancer patients. And we should have those many facilities, whether it is LANAC based or any other um, uh, system based to treat the cancers um, for these many number of patients. So this is the uh, uh, IA data, which says that so many radiotherapy centers are there in, in India of which uh, the electron and electron therapy are 658. And uh, this is how the MEV or uh, this MV therapy is lanac based therapy. The red dots are proton or ion therapy and the brown ones are the brachytherapy. So as you can see that uh, the lanac based radiotherapy is the most common uh, uh, radiotherapy uh, protocol available in the world. And that's why so many uh, commercial companies are there, which provides lining uh, for of various energies and with various features for the treatment of cancer. But uh, in India, Samir is the only uh, organization which we have, which has developed a uh, system, radiotherapy system for uh, uh, treatment of cancer. So uh, from these statistics, we have come out with numbers that uh, if suppose uh, 1 million cases uh, are detected uh, per year, then approximately 20,000 uh, patients per year is uh, are the candidates which require hadron therapy. So how come from radiotherapy, hadron therapy has come up? So this is what I'm going to explain in my uh, later slides. So first of all, why hadrons? Why not only photons are used uh, for therapy? Why we need hadrons or heavy ions? So as you can see, if uh, in the case of uh, photons, uh, if we treat uh, or shine photons from uh, four directions, uh, which is four constant intensity fields, then a lot of healthy tissues also get a lot of dose, which is not required because this additional dose to the healthy tissues leads to the 
side effects which is faced by many cancer patients. So from uh, this so four constant intensity fields, uh, people have involved to intensity modulated radiotherapy, which means the modulation of the radiation takes place so that most of the dose is given to the affected tissues, not to the healthy tissues. And if we compare the most advanced IMRT technique with the proton therapy system, then we see that the proton therapy is more uh, conformal compared to the uh, photon therapy system, as you can see from this figure over here. So just uh, to um, give a brief, what is what are the hydrons? Then the particles are uh, divided into leptons and hadrons. Leptons are light particles, hadrons are heavy particles. So electron comes in the lepton domain and hadron in the hadron domain, uh, this neutron, protons and all the ions comes. So this is why it is called as hadron therapy or proton therapy also. So this is the worldwide scenario of hadron therapy. Only 105 machines are there in the world compared to the photon machines, which is landing based machine, which is around 14,000 numbers in the world. And in India, we have only uh, two facilities. One is operational, one is still in commission stage. So at Apollo Proton Cancer Th Center at Chennai, uh, till today, almost 189 patients have been treated using protons. Uh, and this proton uh, uh, therapy machine is based on a cyclotron. And one more cyclotron based uh, uh, machine is coming at a track Kharger in Mumbai. And but this is in commissioning stage and it has not started with the patient treatment. So these are the numbers which shows that slowly the hadron therapy is becoming popular because it provides the uh, dose which is very conformal and it is very useful for treating brain cancer or eye cancer because uh, or behind these uh, uh, organs, uh, uh, this it, because uh, behind these organs, critical organs are also placed like in brain. So suppose we are treating eye, eye cancer and the dose is given to the brain, then it may cause very, various additional issues apart from the cancer. So in such cases, hadrons are used because Hadrons stop at a particular location and they do not penetrate further. So there is no exit, exit dose in the case of hadrons when we compare it with the radiotherapy. So uh, for hadron, basically cyclotrons and synchrons are only used as the, uh, as the machines which are accelerating the particles. So cyclotrons are now commercially available. available for acceleration of protons for therapy and synchrotrons is the best choice for the acceleration of carbon ions for therapy purpose as of now. So this is how a cyclotron based system looks like. So this is the picture of IBA company based cyclotrons. So cyclotron, as I explained earlier, it consists of two magnets and the particle source is placed in the center. So this is what is shown over here in this slide. And then when the, uh, protons are accelerated to the final energy, they are taken out to the beam line and from the beam line and from the delivery system, it goes to the gantry. So gantry is used to uh, provide the proton beam from all directions for the treatment of the cancer. So you have seen a uh, Samir gantry, which is comparatively a very small and lighter structure compared to the proton therapy gantry, which is a huge two-story structure and it weighs a lot. So this is how it looks like, uh, entire system, uh, cyclotron-based uh, therapy system. So here you see that the diameter required is 2.5 to 3 meter to achieve a, a proton up to 230 MeV energy. And the energy in the cyclotron is fixed, therefore, to uh, vary the energy, to get the beam at different depths, degraders are used in the case of a cyclotron. But uh, if you look at this figure, this is the carbon therapy using a synchrotron. So uh, particles from ECR ion source, like carbon ions are generated in, a, in the ECR ion source, then accelerated, pre-accelerated in a lionic, and then it goes in the main ring and then deliver to the beam lines for the therapy. So this here you see the carbon ion gantry is even huge compared to the proton gantry. So since the 
size of the machine keeps on increasing. Therefore, the cost of the treatment also keeps on increasing. And, and when we compared cyclotrons for proton therapy with carbon ions based synchrons, then we see the circumference of these machines is very, very huge. And uh, uh, compared to the radiotherapy machine, these are huge installations, which cost, which is more than 100 times compared to a uh, radiotherapy machines. So we have cyclotron option and synchrotron option for hadron accelerators, but a lilac option is still in R&D. We have not achieved proton acceleration for therapy from the linear accelerator as of now. The R&D is going on, but it is not reached a state where the therapy has uh, given was uh, given to the patients. So these are the uh, various uh, commercial companies which are providing hadron therapy like Hitachi, Sumitomo, or IPA. So they are offering cyclotrons and synchrotrons for proton and carbon therapy. But the drawback is that the cost is huge. So what we expect from uh, these machines that the cost should go down, the footprint of the machine should come down, and we should not compromise on the quality of the beam which is required for the treatment. So this is what is the basic requirement. So based on this requirement, we are working on a proposal at Samir to develop a multi-ion therapy machine using a fast cycling induction synchron. So the fast cycling means that it will provide the dose to the patients for therapy in a short time. And since synchrotron are used for the uh, acceleration of carbon ions, so what we are proposing here is not only carbon, it, like various other ions starting from protons to carbons to oxygen can be accelerated in this accelerator for therapy purpose. So this is the basic lattice which we have worked out with these machine parameters for the therapy part. So this proposal is still under development. A lot of basic parameters and other things are frozen. But, and also subcomponent level design is going on at Samir. So this is the list of possible ions starting from helium, lithium, carbon, neon, argon. All these can be uh, possible to accelerate with the energy uh, which is shown over here in this. So the basic concept in this case is uh, the synchron, but it is based on induction cavity. So as I've explained in earlier slides, that uh, the synchrotrons are like a cascade type accelerator system because the energy is increased stepwise. So it starts from a source and it goes to a pre-injector, which is a lionic, and then also then goes to the main ring for further acceleration. But what we are proposing is from the source itself, the ions will be given to the main ring and accelerated to the final energy, thus reducing the cost and infrastructure uh, required for the accelerator. So here in this case, what uh, we have uh, proposed is instead of going for a RF synchron, we'll uh, use an induction synchron. But the basic difference between these two things is that in the case of RF synchron, RF cavity will be used. So there is a limitation on bandwidth on the RF source. So it starts from a few MeVs and goes up to tens of MeV. It does not start from a very uh, low frequency the source which is available, it cannot operate from a range of uh, frequencies from kilohertz to hundreds of megahertz. So that is a limitation of RF sources. But in the case of induction cavities, it's a trigger-based system. So we can give a one hertz trigger or 10 hertz trigger, or we can go up to megahertz. So this is the range of the induction cavity uh, giving the acceleration voltage. So this is a main advantage, which will also Give enable us to accelerate very fast ions and also very slow ions to accelerate in the same accelerator ring. So this is how uh, the RF or the bucket looks like in the case of RF for acceleration and in the case of induction acceleration. So in the case of RF, uh, this sinusoidal type uh, voltage is used. So the, here the particles are trapped and the function of acceleration is focusing is provided by this uh, cell, uh, this uh, waveform. But in the case of induction acceleration, pulse voltages are used instead of a continuous RF wave. 
So these pulses are used to confine the particles and accelerate the particles. So this is the basic difference which we have uh, proposed in the conventional machines and the one which we are working at summit. So uh, uh, these concepts are proven uh, way back in KK in their uh, proton synchrotron, uh, where the uh, proton beam was injected at 750 MeV, and through the booster it was uh, given to the uh, main ring and accelerated up to uh, 6 GeV energy. So this concept is also proved. And uh, the all-ion concept also using the induction synchron is also demonstrated at the booster ring of the KK. So based on these experimental uh, proof of principle experiments, we have proposed this accelerator. So hopefully we'll be able to uh, design and develop a indigenous uh, hadron therapy system which will be used for therapy. So I think uh, we are uh, almost uh, covering the time. Is there a time left, uh, uh, Dr. Satya? Uh, uh, if you, uh, do you have some more material or, I mean, yeah, it is roughly an hour uh, that you took. So. Yeah, uh, so that's what, so maybe I'll just conclude. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah time to uh, students so that if they have anything to sure. add, uh, sure. then sure. it will be better. So basically, uh, what I would like to uh, address here again is that uh, uh, in a very short time and in a very hurry, in a hurried manner, I try to explain, but the technology and the uh, disciplines which are required to make an accelerator system work, and that too for uh, therapy, it becomes very, very involved and very uh, tedious task and also very meticulous task because uh, with this radiation, we will be treating the patient. So we have to take care of all the safety aspects which is required to operate these machines and also see to it, the patients are receiving the dose which is desired or uh, which is prescribed by the doctor. And it should not happen at any point of time patient is given a dose which is higher and that too at a location which is not desired. So this is what is the philosophy required and that's why many few people have uh, uh, really tried to develop medical machines in India itself. So uh, that's all from our side. Thank you for your patient hearing and if you have any questions so please uh, let me know. Uh, yeah, uh, Professor Kumal, you want to you want to ask um, to summarize hello? something? Yeah, please. Yes, sir. You go on, please, sir. Okay. Um, yeah. Thanks uh, very much, Dr. Tanuja. I think it was a fantastic talk, given the fact that there is so much of material, so much of so much of the beam lines themselves, so much of technology. Yeah. Uh, the, the way you mentioned about the, the, the precisions that are required, the control systems. Um, and as you pointed out many times during your talk, that after all, these machines are something that are made uh, to cure and to work on humans. So obviously, this is much, much different than somebody developing instrumentation for, let us say, for any other field of engineering or science. And uh, so obviously, it's... Uh, it's much, much tougher. It is not just designing some things to the specs, but also designing something that is safe. And uh, also, you know, and then again, you say that it has to be small in size. It has to be, it should consume less power. And so it's, it's in some sense, uh, this instrumentation is even more tougher than maybe space instrumentation, which is quite unpardonable. Uh, yes, yes. So much that uh, you gave us quite uh, big insights into all this. And I hope. The participants had a good feel of uh, what this involves in and especially on this day engineers day i think it is a, a befitting uh, a kind of a talk for the occasion um, uh, that's what i thought because uh, see it's a very multidisciplinary field and it requires everything almost everything i do not see that something is left out it's it has physics it has chemistry it has vacuum it has electrical electronics radiation <laughs> and then medical also 
they do not medical, physics and medical because we are not into medical so i am i am not talking about need experts yeah, need doctors experts. or a medical physicist point of view of uh, delivering this type of lecture will be entirely different from whatever i have heard. yeah yeah it will be completely yes. from the perspective of yes yes Indian, you know uh, yeah wonderful i mean this is uh, really really a great one and uh, also just one point if my if i may add uh, you know many of these uh, in some sense, the technologies or the science, I don't see there is any kind of difference at some stage. Uh, quite often, one finds as a great spin-off of the instrumentation or the, or the accelerators or the machines that one develops for basic science, nuclear or high energy. And uh, one always says that there are more accelerators in hospitals than in science. Yes, right? yes, yes. Uh, correct. Really correct. That, uh, you know, in some sense, I triply tagline says advancing technologies for the humanity and this is yes. so nice to kind of know that we do advances in science not just on basic science or maybe make money or whatever but uh, to take it to the to the people on street and you know help them do a better life uh, at the end of the day so it's so nice of you uh, to put all those into a nutshell in an hour talk uh, uh, please if uh, there are any any uh, any others have uh, questions to the speaker, please unmute yourself and uh, you can ask questions. Uh, by that time, I want to take one question from uh, YouTube. Yes, uh, uh, okay, there are a couple of questions, it seems to be. The one yes, is, is, can we use muons for hadron therapy? Uh, this is a question from Abhinav Chaudhary. As of now, uh, uh, muons for therapy, Oh, I have not heard of, but there are uh, like uh, high energy uh, physics uh, accelerator facilities where muons are produced and all those things. They have at least tried to produce uh, these particles, but uh, uh, till date, I have not heard of any therapy using muons. Now, if I, I may add uh, to what you said, yes, you are absolutely uh, right on that. And I, I think that is the answer probably. Uh, but, uh, you know, unlike protons, uh, for example, uh, uh, muons are uh, very energetic particles. They traverse through matter without losing ener any energy. The cross sections are a bit quite low. So any beam that doesn't deposit energy into the material through which it is passing is not a beam suitable for therapy. Uh, so therefore, uh, muons, as ma'am said, is not a choice for developing these things. Of course, muons are used for a tomography, muons are used for uh, check, you know, for example, uh, to, to measure or to monitor or uh, to study inside, um, let us say, uh, from ice glaciers to pyramids to uh, maybe, uh, you know, ancient structures and so on and so forth. But those are using uh, the cosmic ray muons, for example, to, to kind of do a tomography, just like the way, let us say, a cargo scanner or uh, maybe a baggage scanner is done in their ports. Okay. But, yeah, yeah. We have also heard about being people using muons, cosmic uh, muons, for some uh, detection purpose, but uh, not for uh, this thing. As you said, that it is not the energy which is getting deposited. It, yeah. And uh, another question from the same user, uh, it says how in participant, how hadron therapy is different from electron beam therapy and positron emission tomography in application slash outcome point of view. So uh, basically uh, proton therapy, uh, basically protons has a black peak compared to the uh, electron therapy. So electron therapy is uh, you normally use for the skin cancers where it, uh, the energy is deposited uh, on the skin itself, it does not penetrate deep inside. So the use of electrons for is only for treatment of skin cancers. But as you see from the protons, protons, they can, uh, depending on the energy, they can penetrate deep inside your body. And then they have a very sharp break peak, which means that they stop at a particular location and they do not deliver any exit dose to the healthy tissue. Tissues which are uh, placed beyond that particular depth are scared. Yes, so that is about 
the second question from YouTube. I don't see any more questions from YouTube. Yes, uh, okay. Uh, if, if there are any other questions from uh, Zoom or YouTube uh, participant, please, please ask ma'am. This is the last opportunity. You have a real expert in the field who can uh, clear your doubts or clarifications that you needed. Maybe I can uh, uh, extend an uh, invitation to Komal so that uh, you can uh, ask your students to visit uh, our labs so that they can have a first-hand experience and they oh. feel to work in such areas. Fantastic. That's really uh, yes, great. Uh, yes. uh, so maybe uh, Komal, you must uh, take this opportunity and yes, sir. <laughs> your college authorities and sometimes you make a visit and that will be uh, as ma'am said, of course, uh, Samir is in some way uh, has an umbilical cord uh, to TIFR. And, TFR. Yes. Uh, so I go sometimes there and I get highly impressed uh, about their about their technology and about their services. We also, of course, utilize some of their services, what ma'am said about the EMI, EMC. And um, of course, I also go sometimes there for some administrative works like the recruitment interviews and so on and so forth, but that apart. So uh, also, uh, I mean, Dr. Tanja, I also am in touch with uh, your Madras, uh, your Chennai unit as Center. well. Center. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's really great. Okay. So I think, uh, Kumal, you can always latch on to the open invitation that ma'am Yes. <laughs> yes <sir. laughs> so uh, I, I can uh, add that uh, this is a gift madam has given to me on this occasion of engineers day and okay. also to my students. So I'll surely going to take good use of this opportunity. Thank you so yeah. much ma'am. You are welcome. You're welcome anytime. Okay. So, so I don't see any more questions. So yes, therefore, I think it is time to thank once again uh, our uh, speaker, Dr. Tanaja, yes. for, uh, as I said, very, very interesting, really informative, at the same time also giving a lot of insights and why uh, this is so state-of-the-art and why it is so tough to build such instrumentation mm -hmm. in it, why there are only fewer, uh, let us say, proton machines, uh, for example, and why it takes so long time. You know, let's see, it took 25 years to build. So, mm -hmm. uh, you can imagine the kind of scales that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, so on behalf of the IPA, in fact, on behalf of uh, Professor Vandana Nanal, uh, who asked my help because she is uh, attending a conference in uh, South Africa. So I want to thank on behalf of IPA uh, for this wonderful talk by uh, Dr. Tanja. And also, of course, our thanks to our gracious host, uh, for and also our organization for taking the IPA colloquium uh, too far and wide from Bombay. <laughs> Thank you, very, very okay. nice uh, handling of things and so on. And okay. all the Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, Bye. thanks to all the participants and that question. Yes, thank you, all the participants. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank, thank you, sir. everybody. Thank you, sir. Take thank care. you, IPA. Thank you, ma'am. Bye. Yes. It's a pleasure. Yeah. All right.